Well, hello there! I'm Dr. Robert Chung, and welcome to your friendly proctologist. If you are returning back to this video and this channel, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being a part of this community. If you're new to this channel, I welcome you to join it. Read the comments, put your comments up, your ideas. If they helped you, they might just help somebody else. Because the internet, really, it's about helping people from all walks of life. It's truly amazing. And if you appreciate and you believe in the mission of this channel, which is to help us with our bottom ends, help each other, then please like and subscribe. It greatly helps and makes a huge difference. Today, I want to bring a very awesome topic, I think, because I want to give you some, like a checklist or things to do when you get a thrombose external hemorrhoid. And I know some of you will be thinking like, finally, Dr. Chung, a useful video. We always wanted you to tell us what to do. Uh, one of the comments that I got recently was super funny. It said, when you're trying to reach the minimum word limit in an essay. <laughs> Good one. I love it. I love the internet because it's such, oh, it's good stuff. Anyway, I'm very much into the why and how, but I get it. You know, your brain works differently. So I hope this video appeals to many of you. It's a quick way to grab some good info. We're going to talk about what to do with a external thrombus hemorrhoid, but after we speak about the sponsor of this video, which is Revival X. Are. and this is available on Amazon right now it is in stock and I invite you to check out that web page to get the dirty or get the clean on it since we're on we're talking about bath salt supplements here and I've spoken about this probably before we've gone over the fact that it's got a lot of organic essential oils um, a lot of herbs it's a very natural product again no prescription medications in this product i use this especially when i get hemorrhoid flares because when i need that relaxation this appeals to many more senses than just himalayan pink salts or epsom salts right it's got the fragrances it's going to appeal to your sense of smell because we know that the hemorrhoid game is not just a physical one it's a mental one we need that relaxation to happen and the oils also lock in that hydration in our skin and provide some protection and healing for it so how do we use this well the instructions say here to use two tablespoons in a shallow amount of warm water and you can use whatever temperature water that helps Helps you to relax can you fill up the whole bathtub and use more of this stuff absolutely and the best part is again the fragrance thing is a huge thing for me because I'm sensitive to certain smells it is very subtle and so that makes it so nice I've used actually like one quarter of the bag because I really wanted to test it out and the scent was not annoying which is great so great job Revival XR you've done your homework done your research and Let's get to the video for today. Check them out. There is a coupon for this, and it's in the description box below. All right, so let's talk about the things to do for external thrombose hemorrhoids. So the first thing that happens with these thrombose hemorrhoids is that there's a funny feeling, whether it's painful or there's something swelling, something does not feel right. And what's in your bottom end, it causes people to panic and get a lot of anxiety. Okay. And so my first thing is to try to relax, try to see what is going on. Because I'll tell you, cancer doesn't just spring up out of the blue. Okay. These thrombose hemorrhoids, they do spring up out of the blue and they kind of grow very, very quickly. Their symptoms accumulate quickly. Okay, so just be comforted that, okay, you're very likely not in a life-threatening scenario, okay? So keep an eye on it, but definitely try not to let your mind go to those deep, dark places. Number two, slow your roll. If you're in the middle of gardening, don't do more gardening. Don't break out the big bags of mulch and start doing heavy lifting or start moving your house at that point. Maybe say, okay, I got to take a little break here. There's something just quite not right. Because if you do a lot more activity, you may be irritating the area, making that blood 
clot or bleeding episode a lot worse and a lot bigger. Number three is that you want to start practicing relaxation. It's very, very easy to get caught up in all the excitement, negative excitement, I guess you can say, and your anus just wants to start squeezing because you're so nervous and stressed. Do deep breathing exercises, meditate if you have to, keep telling yourself you're, you're okay, something weird is happening, but we're not going to die. We want to just stay calm throughout this scenario. Now, a lot of this you're not going to be able to help, okay? But the key is you're doing the best that you can. Number four is that you're probably going to go to the bathroom and look at your butt now, right? So you're going to try and figure out what the heck is going on. Do I see anything? Maybe you'll take some pictures and see. I want to compare from now until 10 minutes later. And that's okay to do that. But I suggest you don't use a lot of wiping, okay? Try to use more of a hands-off approach for this, just because if it's painful, you don't want to make it more mad or make yourself mad. Maybe use a bidet, a squeeze bottle bidet you can get on Amazon, or if you have like a squeeze bottle at home, even like one of those spray bottles, you know, anything to make your hands not touch it or wipe it. You can even just use a shower and just wash off that way or just take a sitz bath. And like I said, relaxation is key here, so just maybe taking an early sitz bath can be very helpful for hygiene, and you can use the Revival XR if you got that hanging around the house. This stuff will stay fresh in your bag forever. It's got a Ziploc on the top, so maybe that's a, something that you may want to try. Number five is that you may sense that a bump is growing quite quickly. And so you're kind of like wondering, like, what the heck do I do with it? Do I sit on it? Um, do I, how do, can I put pressure on it? Because you say it's bleeding, Dr. Chun. And I said, yeah, you're exactly right. So something to try is putting a roll of gauze, right? And putting it directly, so this is your anus here, putting it directly on top of your hole. Open your butt cheeks up and then close it after you put the gauze in to hold it in place. You shouldn't need any tape really if you do you can just use a small little piece of tape don't like make a huge net or mat of tape it's gonna be painful for your skin when you have to take it off and then once you put that gauze on go ahead and sit on it for a little while it can put pressure and to help things stop bleeding just like if you have a cut on your arm what do you do you put pressure on it with your hand or anything you know like a gauze so that's something you can try as well how long should you sit there I think putting it sitting down for at least 15 to 30 minutes would be a good idea. And then you can check up on it. You can change the gauze out if you want to. And that would be one way to try and slow down the bleeding. Number six is you can take pain medication if you start to feel the pain coming on, right? But I do recommend certain medications over another. So for example, Tylenol is safe to take. Just follow the instructions in the back of the bottle as long as it's safe for your medical conditions. But there are two medications that people take that I do not recommend. For example, the non-steroidal group like Motrin, ibuprofen, aspirin, okay? And you may be saying, Dr. Chung, but those are the only ones that work for me. And I know, I know it sucks, it sucks. But the problem with non steroidals okay, is that they prevent the platelets. They are blood cells that help with patching up your broken blood vessels. So your hemorrhoid blood vessels are open right now and the blood is coming out into your skin. If you take these medications, that platelets can't stick. They can't plug up those holes. So what they end up doing is allow your bleeding to keep happening. And as much as it sucks to not have that pain relief from those meds, because they definitely work well, you're going to keep bleeding. And so if you kind of think about that, which one would you rather have? Bleeding stop sooner so that you have a smaller bump or feel better while it's still bleeding? <laughs> you know, I'm not sh I, I certainly would recommend you do not take those medications. How long should you not take those ibuprofen and stuff like that? At least a good 24 hours while that bump is a stable size. Okay, You want at least 24 hours for that 
platelets and the cells to start maturing and then what happens is you have fibrin laid down collagen laid down and that's when you start to get real good scar tissue formation but if you do it too early before the platelets have yet to do their job uh, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot there. Tip number seven is start taking sitz baths if you haven't already. You've got to use the advantages of relaxation. Why is that important? Oh, get it. Dr. Chum, more wise. Well, the thing is, if you think about it, your anus is closed down tightly because your sphincter muscles are squeezing, they're irritated, okay? So what happens is on the hemorrhoids on the outside, they get blood flow in, okay? The arteries are pumping blood in, but the problem is there is no blood return through the hemorrhoids because this muscle is closed down tight. So what does that cause? It causes the hemorrhoids on the outside to continue swelling or the biggest concern is that they keep bleeding at this point. So taking a cyst bath early can be helpful. Open up those muscles so blood flow can return. You don't have as much back pressure potentially causing more bleeding to occur. Number eight is I suggest you use a cream on your bottom end once you get out of the tub. These creams don't heal blood vessels, they won't shrink the blood, the hemorrhoid itself, but they provide symptom relief. So if you're having a little bit of irritation, Prep H with lidocaine can help numb the area down. Maybe also when you're walking and you start to feel that bump, the creams will allow things to lubricate the skin and allow things to pass by. If you want to try Pranicura, this is another time to use that as well. The next step, if you haven't thought about it already, I'm sure you have, you're boggling your mind as to what causes things in the first place, is I suggest you take stool softeners, especially if it has to do with a bowel movement recently, but definitely if you've got one of these going on, you don't want to have more hard poops, right? So if your poop is not soft, or you want insurance to make sure your poop is soft, start thinking about things like Colace. I've got videos explaining that. Start thinking about polyethylene glycol or Miralax as it's called. The generics are okay, start thinking about doing that every day. And then if you are definitely in trouble, meaning you feel like you're straining but the poop is not coming out, you may need to think about taking a laxative like Docolax. If you take those, you can ha usually have a bowel movement within the next few hours. So they can at least prevent you from straining so much. This can be an assistance to get the poop out sooner rather than holding on much later to who knows when, right? Item number 10 is that be aware the first three days are the most painful okay it's actually going to climb up really quickly typically gonna hit a peak that peak may stay around for a day or two and then start to slowly slowly come down much slower than when things rose up okay and again what's happening there the in the immune system sees the damage and is now rushing toward it trying to repair things so the swelling is very normal the pain the redness and the heat that's coming from your bottom end that is all expected and very normal checklist number 11 is when do you see a doctor about this issue well I give you some tips here is that it's getting really big and you're really concerned about this thing how much bigger it's going to get the other issue is it's really big and you don't know what it is you're thinking maybe it's not a thrombose hammer maybe it's something else like oh gosh I should I'm really really worried about it another reason is because the pain is so bad Tylenol you know you've even snuck in an ibuprofen and Motrin because like Dr. Chung I know you said not to take it but man, this thing hurts like hell. I just need to be able to get past the next minute. And you may need some stronger medication. Um, be aware though that many doctors are not very sympathetic. And it's, yeah, the opioid epidemic is to blame. But some of these doctors, honestly, they haven't had a tough day in their life or they haven't had a butt issue. I, I don't know what it is. I just, it doesn't, I don't get it. It blows my mind. But you may need to see an, a doctor or two just in case one person doesn't give you the help that you need. Another thing that you may ask the doctor about is getting a steroid cream at least, like hydrocortisone. And don't get the one that's over the counter because it is not strong enough. The prescription is a little bit stronger so that can be helpful. What does the steroid cream do? Well, it helps 
decrease inflammation because it's blinding the immune system, trying to prevent it from doing its job, which it's a good thing, but at the same time, it can help with some symptoms here. And so the swelling can come down, the pain can get better, the itching can also get better too. The last thing is to consider what are the options? Do I have to live with this thing? You know, should I see the doctor about getting a procedure done? And I've got plenty of videos on this. You can go ahead and search for them. Um, I'll also put it in the description below. But that's the time to think about, is this thing so bad that my life is just put on hold? Or is it not so bad? Yeah, I can kind of tough it out, especially if this is sounds feels like it's the very maximum pain level yeah i think i can wait another day and just see how things go and because i told you my last video summary is if it's really bad the procedure may be worth it if it's not then going the natural may be the way to go but it does take three to four months at some times to get this thing the whole to completely go away but your body is prepared to deal with no matter what decision you decide to take so I hope you have gotten some information, some helpful tips here to how to deal with the thrombosis hemorrhage as it's coming at you. But the biggest thing is to try and relax as much as you can and get that help early and get your poop soft again as soon as possible. And uh, once again, I want to remind you of Revival XR. I highly suggest you pick this up from the Amazon store. Use my coupon. They've been so gracious to give us that discount. And try it out when you get your next hemorrhoid tag whether it's an internal one or an external one i'll have more videos like this and how what to do right away when you get that problem like a prolapse hemorrhoid internal hemorrhoid flare um, an anal abscess those things are coming up soon so i hope you be patient with me have a great day take care bye bye